superstars. I'm so excited. Mowgli has had his week of, well, it was going to be under saddle, but Mr. Moogs is, again, a little bit more unfit and a little bit, oh, yeah, <laughs> more uneducated than one expected. So we are doing lots and lots of groundwork. So I'm going to show you everything that we've done. I'm going to show you how to really take it easy with him. I'm still confident that we'll actually be on him next week because he's come a really long way in a week. But um, yeah, he's phenomenal. So just so you know, from last week, he's had his teeth done and he's had his feet done. So he's all ready and schmick to go. He's put on loads of muscle already because he's been spending lots of time in the walker, being hand walked, really controlled walking exercise with a few lunges in between. But as you're soon going to see, it's not just lunging for exercise, it's lunging for him to understand how the bit works, how the bridle works, how the connection from the back to the front works so that we can do all of that before we get on him. A little bit safer for me and much happier for him. So, Let's get started. So guys, I just wanted to show you a little bit of before and after footage of this wonderful little guy this week. He really came on in strides and I can't wait to show you how to really make this happen in a really calm, exciting way so that you have a really nice experience with these guys and they don't get too worried. I can't wait to talk you through it. Okay guys, so I've got him all tacked up and what I do with our little man is because he's not 100% happy yet in the cross ties, and when you do up the girth, he occasionally reacts a little bit badly, I still tack him up in his box. Because when he's in his stable, if he pulled back accidentally, if he barked, if anything like that happened, he's safe. He can't escape, it's a rubber floor, and he and me are safe. So I still tack him up in his stable to give him that security and safety. I'm teaching him how to go into the cross ties. So he gets his afternoon bath in the cross ties and we do it in a moment where we've got time to spend with him to enjoy the process and not get too stressed. So we've got his bridle all set up here. Couple of things I wanna point out for you, if you just look at his bridle for me. I wanna point out that we've put him in, begin, begun with the end in mind. So we've got him in a bridle that fits him well and that he can have for a long period of time. The nose band, both the nose bands are not tight, but they're also not gapingly loose. So they're there to give him support, but they're not there to jam his mouth shut. So you can see here that it's not really tight. It's not there to hold his mouth shut. It's just there to keep the bit in a nice place and keep him comfortable. We've just got him in a lovely French link snaffle, just so he's nice and comfy. And again, looking for beginning with the end in mind. I've taken the reins off while we lunge him to make that a little bit easier so there's just not another thing that he can get caught on. He does buck and bronk a little bit, which you'll see in a second, or maybe not. Well, I've got some footage if he doesn't. So I don't want any reins for his legs to get caught, etc. On the front, I've put some overreach boots on him and some open front jumping boots. Again, we know that he has an old tendon injury, so we don't want to heat up that tendon. So I keep the open front jumping boots to protect the tendon, but to also make sure that there's airflow and he's nice and cool. One really important note that I'd like to say is I always put the roller on and you'll see this when we actually get him into the arena, but a couple of things I do to create a bit of extra comfort for them. I put a normal saddle pad on in the normal shape and then I fold another one over to give a little bit of extra padding and I never ever ever use the roller girth that comes with it because they are horrific. <laughs> if you want a girth gall, use those. So I always put one of my actual proper dressage girths on. It's got a contour to it. You can see here it's cleared his little elbow really well. So he's going to be safe and comfortable. All right, guys, let's get out there and show you what he's like on the lunge. Woohoo! Okay, guys, so I'm very lucky in that I have a round yard. So this is a really nice safe area where if where I can really let him go and he's not gonna dr drag me along, he's not, I'm not gonna lose him. So I'm really lucky with this. If you don't have an area like this, you can use your arena. Equally, if you don't have an arena, just try to find somewhere that's a little enclosed so that you don't put yourself at risk and get dragged around the field, okay? The other couple of things I'd like to point out is my attire. Make sure that you have good footwear on. Um, 
I've just stopped riding another horse. That's why I've got these on, but they're still good enough and I can move, I can jump, make sure that you're mobile in them and always wear a helmet. I know it sounds a little bit silly. You're not riding your horse, but these guys kick <laughs> and they kick quite unpredictably. Lunging, in my opinion, is sometimes even more dangerous than riding. So don't be a hero, wear your helmet. It's so worth it. So as you can see, Mowgli and I, again, are really getting quite a nice little relationship together. But what he does do is tends to explode a little bit. So I'm gonna talk to you through about what I'm looking at doing and how I'm looking at managing him here. But be aware that quite possibly he can occasionally just bush explode. So I've always got my guard on a little bit that I don't accidentally get kicked in the face. <laughs> good boy. It's really good for him to stand here like this and just be patient. He's only three. He doesn't have that level of patience. So he's getting better and better. And this is some part of what I do is just stand here with him and just, you know, talk about the day with Fee. <laughs> She's got laughing at me behind the camera, guys. So yeah, just stand here and have a chat. If you're a coach and you give lessons to kids and things like that, if you feel like you've got enough control, you can just stand here, hang off him a little bit, and he's just got to be patient and be with you. Okay, and as you can see, he's pretty content with all of that now. Now we move on to the lunging. The goal here is not at all to make him tired. The goal here is not at all to make him sweat. He probably will, but it'd be ideal if I could just get five or 10 minutes of him trotting around happily, then making him work hard. Doesn't quite work that way yet because of the, nat it's the nature of the beast, so to speak, but that's my goal. Couple of things to understand. We're eventually gonna work into double lunging, which means you have two lunge ropes, one on the outside and one on the inside. Okay, but the reason why we're only going to have one on the inside at the moment is that it gives him the availability to fall to the outside a little bit and do this, yeah? And what that does is it makes him feel not confined, but still gives him the idea of connection and the idea of starting to lower down through the bridle. If I put two reins on him straight away, that's when you get horses flipping and really getting afraid. So yes, do we want them to eventually not drift? Of course we do. But right now, he's allowed to a little bit. He's a baby. And when we can ride circles after circles after circles and it's happy, then we can add the extra rain, okay? And it won't take us long, but we wait until it's the right time. The next thing to be aware of is preparation. So I've got my whip here ready. It's a guide, it's an element to say, it's your extension of your leg as if you were riding, it's not to whip them really hard. It's very important that you know that. It's just an extension of your arm, which is then basically metaphorically your leg if you were riding them, to say go a little bit more. It's not there to beat him up, okay? The lunge rein, I've threaded through both sides of the bit to lead him here. So that means that if he goes off, the bit's not gonna get dragged through his mouth. But now that I'm here, I'm unclipping one side and I clip that to the side of the roller, okay? But as you can see, this moves. So what it gives me the ability to do is give him freedom and then release. Freedom and then release. If he really gets afraid or really starts to struggle, I can let go completely and he's not going to hurt himself. If I just tie him down completely, he could hurt himself quite significantly. If I just let him completely free, he's not learning any dressage. So the idea of this is to start to get him to understand the concept, a little bit of connection before we get on. So then we're about to get ready and we're about to get going. Couple of notes to remember with your lunge, okay? You should actually wear gloves to be fair, and I'm not, so my apologies, I probably should be, but I am quite skilled and know when to let go. So I'm not gonna get rope burn, I'm not gonna wrap the lunge rope around my hands to get injured, but you really should wear gloves because it, it can prevent rope burns. So I would recommend it and I am a little naughty for not doing it. So remember when you're lunging him that you need him to go forward. So you need to line yourself up fairly much with his shoulder, okay? Your hand tells him which direction to go. So if you want him to go forward, you point with your hand and your whip 
encourages him to go forward, okay? When you first send them off, walk with them a little bit because if you send them off and just push them sideways from here, that's when you get a foot in the face and it's, it's not a nice experience at all, okay? So we're gonna ask him to walk up and we use our whip to help. And as he gets the idea of walking, we'll step away and make sure you get away fairly quickly. And he's actually been quite good today. So first things first, I'm just gonna let him jog around. And as you see, I'm not using too much connection, but he's already worked this out quite significantly. And what I might do is cut over for a second to what he was like originally, and you'll get a bit of an idea of how far he's come. And this is only in a few days. And already he's taking that contact out. Well, there we go. There we go, there's our Mowgli. And notice I don't correct him for that. It's just a misunderstanding. It's just him activating his back, not quite sure where to go. You can see his rhythm's a little bit wrong here, but he's taking the connection, so that's excellent. What I'm looking for is that the lunge rein doesn't ever go too loopy, okay? And if it does, then I tighten it up and try to push his quarters out a little bit with the whip. And you'll see then by doing that, he starts to connect. Again, I bring him a bit smaller in this moment, push his quarters out with the whip. And then when he responds, good boy, I ask him to go out. If that didn't work like there, woo! Good boy, keep going. Good job. I bring him in again. And every time that whip, that lunge rope goes slack, I bring him in and then I let him go out straight back out again. And I just guide the whip towards his bottom to try to push his quarters outside of his bum. Good boy. Oh, he falls in again. And because he's now starting to fall in and out a bit more consistently, I do some transitions to help him find his way. So I ask him to canter. And what I do for canter is I try to hold it in the air so they understand, good boy, that that's canter. Good boy, Moogs. Good boy. That that's canter and sideways with my whip is forward. I then ask him to trot. If he doesn't listen, I make the trot, the can the circle smaller. Good boy. And as soon as he trots, I make it big again. Then I canter. Hop. Good boy. And you saw there, he didn't do it exactly when I asked, but I gave him the moment to find his way. And trot again. Didn't listen, small. Out, straight away he listened. Good boy, canter. Hop. Turn him around, doesn't matter if he's disunited. Just let him find his way. Again, bring him smaller. Good boy, and out. Good job, and canter again. Hop. Hop. Good boy, and then sideways means forward. Good boy, then trot again. So what I'm trying to do here is get him to constantly be with me. Good boy, and then out again. Constantly be with me and thinking rather than him just carrying on. Doesn't matter if he just denies, you just let him go because he's not even at that stage yet. And then bring him in, trot, and out again. Good boy. Canter, hop, 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 hop. Good boy. Good boy, canter, hop. Good, and trot again, trot. And again, as soon as he doesn't listen, I take him off balance. Good boy, canter, hop, 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 hop. There's our buck. And you just, again, let him do it. Good boy, as soon as he's back to trot, bring him smaller again. That takes him off balance. As soon as he's trotting back out again. So that you gain control, canter, hop, 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 hop. Good boy, Moogs. And then back to trot again. And you'll watch over time, Good boy, and out. Then he'll start to round down. Good boy, just because the hindquarters work. Canter, hop. Doesn't matter that he's disunited. Trot, and again, canter, hop, hop, hop. Doesn't matter he's disunited. And trot, and let go, trot. Good boy, and let go immediately. Hop. Good boy, canter, hop. 
Very good boy. Don't worry about the leads. He even sold that one himself. And trot. Bring him small, let him out. Good boy, Mogsy. Good boy, and you see now, he's starting to get the hang of it. And he's even coming into a frame. Canter, hop, 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 hop. Good boy. Okay, and trot. Bring him in once. Oh, and he listened that time. Canter, hop. Good boy, Mogi. And trot. Good boy, canter. Hop, 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 hop. Good boy. It's all right, just let that happen. That's just his little hind leg coming in. He's thinking, whoa, I don't know what's going on. Good. And then look at that canter now. It's okay to let them have that moment. And then back to trot. Bring him in if he doesn't listen. He's a bit excited. Good. And then straight back out again. Good. And canter again. Hop. Hop. Good boy, Mogi. Good boy. And what I'm doing with the rain now is just starting to massage it and then let go. Canter. Hop. Hop. Good boy. Massage it and then let go. Good boy. Good. And trot. And you see, he's giving me that stretch naturally now because the transitions that we've done have asked him to use his back well. Good boy. And what I do with him at the moment is I do one day one way, one day the other way. Good boy. Canter, hop. Canter, hop. Hop, hop. Let me try again. A little bit more help. Canter, hop. Good boy. And back to trot again. He doesn't listen, bring him in immediately so that he keeps his connection, push his quarters out and let him back out again. Canter, hop, hop. Good job. And back to trot again. Good boy. And that's how I didn't even need to use my rein. Canter, hop, 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 hop. Good boy, doesn't matter. He's a little disunited. He figured it out himself. Back to trot. And then back to canter. Hop. Hop. Good job. That's a gallop. Let it happen. Get his canter back. And then trot. And straight away drive the trot up so that you get him to round down like this. And look at how already how much that trot's improving just by doing those transitions. Canter. Hop. Hop. Very good boy. Don't worry about the disuniting. Try again, canter. Hop. Good boy. Look at this, look at this stretch. How amazing is that? Good boy. And then again, we bring him back to trot as he starts to fall in. Good boy. And we let him jog it out. So when he's worked this hard, what we don't want to do is immediately just stop. We want him to try to jog it out a little bit. So very, very lightly, little tiny steps, massaging the bridle, then letting go. So he stretches his back. And as I've said to you before, if you let the rein go and they drop their neck, you know that they've used their back well. And you saw, ah, uh -uh, no stopping. Good boy. And you saw that he's doing that, that he's jogging along Majority of the time with his neck down toward the ground because those transitions have really allowed him to use his back. Good boy, little man. Good boy. Yeah. Good boy. And you can see I don't ask him to do it all the time, but I keep my messaging the same. So I let him be free. I let him be wild. I don't worry that he's bucking. It's fine. Look at me. I'm still standing. I'm all good. And you've got to let them be themselves and be horses and work out what's correct. And you just stick to, good boy Mogi, your simple instructions. And walk. If they don't listen, you bring their circle smaller. And the second they respond, walk. You kick it out again. 
And this end part is a really difficult part to train. Lots of horses won't walk on the lunge. Good boy, little guy. Good boy. So if you can teach it, it's a really good skill for him to have later. So yeah, if we can walk him, it's very hard to teach a horse to walk on the lunge, but it's very, very good for them to be able to do it. So you try to keep them turning, but keep them going. Hey, good boy. So they understand that, hey, I can also be calm here. Ooh, that I don't have to trot around like a crazy person all of the time. But just be careful that you keep them moving. Better they have a little jog like that, then they stop. Very good, Mowgli. And as you see, he's far, worked far too hard to do the other direction. Walk, walk. So what I do is I just let him cool down by doing this walk with him until his little nostrils aren't puffing anymore. And the next day, I do the other side. So he gets both sides done, but you're able to stick with it until he gets it correctly, which he's done here. And this is a really big step forward for our Mr. Mowgli. When we first got him, I asked my groom to lunge him and she's very good. And she <laughs> rang me back and said, uh, I don't want to. Because <laughs> he really did not want to know anything. So this is only a week's work and we're so proud of him. You see, he's not afraid of the whip. I can touch him with it because he knows it's just a guide. It's not a weapon and it's really important. Let him trot because that was a good response, but then ask him to walk. So walk. Doesn't listen, immediately bring him small, but keep your driving aids on. Ooh, good boy. Very good. So that he keeps the idea of walking. Good boy. Yeah. If you can't get them to do this, and to be fair, at the beginning of the week, we couldn't, you have to hand walk them until that puffiness is all gone away. Good boy. So this might take 20, 30, 40 minutes to actually happen, okay? So I'm actually gonna pop him on the walker for a little bit just to give him an end. So we bring him over here. Hello, baby. And they know once the whip is down, we can be friends again. It's all about friendly time. Again, this is why we wanna be in a confined place because there is that moment in time like now when you really actually don't have full control. Good boy. Let's come up and see Fee. Always keeping my lunge rope off the ground like you saw. And you see his little nostrils, Fee will show you. See how they're quite fluffy still? We need to walk him until they're normal, okay? I'm lucky I've got a walker, so I'll put it on granddad mode. So he'll just like ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba. Otherwise, have him walk around like I did. Oh, I'll just do this. Take him out. Let him have a, maybe a small hand pick and just walk him around and tell him what a bloody good boy he is. Yeah? Now, he did so well today that the next step is we'll put a double lunge on. So the same thing, but he'll also have an outside rein because he's not fearful of it anymore. And then on Monday, I'll probably get on. Yeah? You think to yourself, what about those bucks? How am I going to sit them? Hopefully we won't get them because he'll be even a bit more balanced again. When we first started this week, those bucks were the entire time. So he's much, much better already. So thank you so much guys for all your support with Mowgli. I hope this has helped. Ask me any questions you'd like below and we will see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe because subscriptions are everything we need to keep this going. And we are loving this so much. We'd love to do more. We'd love to help more, but we need the subscriptions to do it. So if you're watching today and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe because it will help Mowgli, it will help me, and it will help you in the long run. <laughs> Bye guys. Mwah!